Hi, everybody. My name is Ita. I'm with the City of Burlington's Department of Permitting and Inspection. And we're going to go through a series of photos that were taken in the City of Burlington. These are all before photos and everything that you're going to see here in this video. All of these items have been remediated since these photos were taken. First, I want to remind us that this is, again, Burlington centric. You're going to find a lot of things here that are relevant and applicable if you aren't in Burlington and we look forward to uh, addressing anything hopefully in this video. We're going to start with outside. When I come up to a property, I, I encounter the outside first. So we're going to go ahead and start with outside. I'm going to give you a moment to take each of these photos in. There are a couple of things that are happening in this photo. You'll notice down below along the green belt is a series of relatively neatly organized recycling Burlington now requires covered toters, but the time that this was taken, it was not required and, and covered toters weren't actually regularly available in Burlington when this photo was taken. But you'll notice that it's all relatively neat and the boxes are broken down if they're in other boxes and recycled items are inside containers. And that is exactly how we want recycling to show up in a green belt. Neat boxes broken down in containers. In the back though, on the other half of the sidewalk, leaning up against the building, you'll see a giant pile of garbage. Garbage is not, garbage is intended to be in garbage bins. It's too difficult for uh, haulers to be able to pick those up by themselves. So that pile of garbage stayed in front in that front lawn for a couple of weeks before it was all able to be cleaned up. Garbage goes in garbage bins. Again, even if you happen to take all of your garbage out to the to the side of the road. Garbage needs to be in garbage bins for tenants. This means directly into the bins, even if they're in bags. Um, for property owners and property managers, it means sufficient toters need to be provided for the properties that you're uh, managing. This was a Monday after a big party weekend in Burlington. You'll notice that there's a lot of items discarded around the yard and behind the bushes. Have fun have safe fun, but clean up after yourselves. Garbage goes into bins. This is a picture of two vehicles parked in the yard. When a property has the capacity to be able to provide the occupants with a driveway, driveways have to be used. Parking on the lawn is not permissible. It's a zoning violation and um, it's bad for the earth. We want to make sure that, that the, the flow of of water and environmental items aren't destroyed by parking in yards. This is a picture of a sofa, an interior, an inside sofa on an outside porch. Inside furniture stays inside and outside furniture can be outside. The material is cloth, outside stays wet. Burlington is one of the dampest cities in the country. It's disgusting when the mold and mildew that grows, there's just too many opportunities for gross things. That's the first thing. The second, besides the grossness, is, is it's a fire hazard. So if you need to bring a piece of upholstered furniture outside, say you want to air it out, that's fine, but it needs to be inside by the end of the business day. Um, and it can't stay out overnight. I'm going to give you all a moment to see if you can find the violation in this photo. This is one of my favorites. All right, I'm about to point it out, so hurry up. Here we go. Right up here on the second floor, right above the porch, is a, a second floor porch with just a single, a single guardrail that's up high. If this was piled up with snow, it's really easily the occupant up there can slip on the snow and ice and kind of fall totally unsafe. So we had them install a few more railings to code. The What you'll find as you're going through this presentation is that items should work as they're supposed to. So this is a tread of a stair. It should be a full tread. Um, and this is not a full tread because part of it is broken and um, and falling off of the off the step. 
stairs should be full stairs. This is a roof. A single portion of a roof should have one type of material. If you find that somebody is uh, replacing or repairing a roof with a different material, then they're not doing it properly. Uh, they're not doing it to code and they should, and you should definitely contact our office to let us know. We'll have a conversation with them. If you see holes or damaged boards on the exterior of a building, that is definitely a violation and it should get attended to. I'm just going to go back here and point out the cleverness of the rain happening on the day that this picture was taken. Holes on the exterior and soffits and fascia um, and roof really invite pests entering the building. While there are a couple of things happening in this photo, what I want to draw your attention to is when squirrels get into a building, they really, really want to get out and they panic. And often what that means is that they will claw through drywall or any place where they see a little bit of light just to escape. What they want is an easy way to get outside. Uh, so if you see a hole on the exterior, notify the property owner or property manager right away so that can get right so that can get repaired. It's not okay to leave furniture, even furniture you don't want anymore, in the green belt um, or leaving outside of your property. Remember this picture because it's going to come back again in a little bit. If you are leaving it in the green belt so that resource or another organization can come and pick it up, or you've sold it to somebody, it needs to get picked up by the end of the business day because it cannot stay outside overnight. Those are the things about the outside. Now we're going to get into a little bit about vermin. This is, this is what shows up when um, the exterior and sometimes even the interior is not attended to. This is a bed bug. Do you remember those that uh, lovely... Um, fluffy sofa and love seat picture that I shared with you that was left in the green belt earlier. Three weeks later, I went to an apartment and uh, about a bu bed bug um, infestation. And I went in here and I found a series of bed bugs. It was new. Um, these were really small, really young. And I also found that sofa and love seat. So what happened was these tenants picked up this beautiful pieces of furniture, brought it to their new apartment, and also brought with them a delightful infestation of wee creatures. Bed bugs don't carry diseases that we know of that are harmful, but they're extremely annoying, and they, are, um, they, are, they cause high emotional stress and emotional trauma, and um, we got to do our best to try to prevent their coming into our, into our apartments. This is the life of a bed bug from left to right. That is an egg. It's about the size of a poppy seed. Then it's a um, nymph and a young and uh, an unfed adult. And then a fed adult. A fed adult is the size of uh, an apple, apple seed. So from the size of a poppy seed to the size of an apple seed is the life of the bed bug. This is what it looks like when you have had bed bugs that are biting you. These little black marks, black and brown marks, are um, evidence of, of bed bug defecation. They like to live in these dark crevices and crawl in these dark crevices. What they'll do is they'll crawl onto your body and take what's known as a breakfast, lunch, and dinner bite. So they'll bite you, they'll crawl a little bit, they'll bite you again and draw some blood, and they'll crawl a little bit, and they'll bite you again and draw some more blood. And then as they walk away, they'll defecate and get rid of some of the excess blood that their, their bodies don't need right now. On your body, it'll show up usually as, as three three bumps in a row if your body is bothered by or agitated by bed bug bites. 
um, and this is the evidence that they'll leave behind. <clears throat> the, the difference between a rat and a mouse is pretty significant. Many of us in um, not just Burlington, but all over the state will find that mice pop in and out of our houses. They like to stay warm, um, but there are some really important things for us to notice. So first we're gonna start with the difference between sizes. Uh, Norway rat, um, these are the ones that come off the water, um, that come through basements. They're pretty big, they're heavy and they're thick. They've got tiny ears and really long tails. Roof rats, which we don't see a lot of in Burlington, but it doesn't mean that they're not there. I haven't seen any, but it doesn't mean that I don't believe they're not there. They're lighter. They still look like rats. Um, they've got larger, slightly larger ears, slightly pointier snouts. Uh, mice are the smallest mice, similar, very similar to voles. They have small heads and feet. Most that we see in houses are light brown and some gray. The best way to know, and often the first way you know whether or not you have an infestation of a rodent is because they left their evidence behind. They chewed through something, they left, they defecated as they were moving. You'll you're more likely to find mouse and rat poop um, along the edges of walls and in cabinets. This is, this is not the real size of rat and mouse and cockroach poop, but that it is to scale to one another. So what I want to draw your attention to is the difference between mouse poop and cockroach poop, because they often show up in very similar sizes. And uh, cockroach poop will is smaller than this than what you see here, but they all cling together and form form a nugget that's that that looks like that. Mouse poop is uh, similarly sized, but often has a little tail that that happens when the mouse is when it's um, coming out of the mouse's body. Um, the three things most important things to know about all pests is that. They, they get hungry and thirsty, so they need food. They all want to sit back and relax, so they need a place to live, and they all want to be loved, a.k.a. cuffing season. They want to cuddle. They want to procreate. They need food. They need a place to live, and they all want to be loved, so that if we could interfere with one of those three things, we decrease significantly the chances of pests infesting our our homes next this is vermont we've got 15 months of winter so we're going to talk about heating most of the time it's it, it'll it it would be up to us if we see something like this it, it it falls under the requirements of the property owners or property managers but if you have a winter storm that is feet deep um, it might be a while before they're able to get there so if you can do anything to assist your property owners and property managers with clearing out the, the exhaust coming from the house, then go ahead and do that. When you don't do it, it causes a backup, sometimes fumes back into the house, which can be physically harmful. If there is a heating device and it doesn't have a way to exhaust to the outside, it is not installed properly, right? This is a wood a gas stove, rather, a gas stove, and it doesn't have uh, an exhaust to the exterior, a vent to the exterior. If you're looking at a place or if you're walking through your place and you notice that um, a heating device has this on it, it's called a red tag. It's, uh, it is a violation tag that somebody from Vermont Gas will place on any device that they deem is unsafe for use. And they'll write out what they think is wrong with it and the repair that needs to be done. This is from 2009 and this property has changed owners now. So the unfortunate thing is that Vermont Gas doesn't take these tags down. So if you see one, 
ask questions, but don't panic just yet, right? So pay attention to the date, give Vermont Gas a call, give your landlord a call, and get some clarity before worrying. Y'all, basements are gross. There's a lot of cool things about having a basement, but but basements are gross. Pipes back up into basements, and sometimes water is left unattended to. And backup plus unattended water means icky growth to mushrooms growing. Some people might think it's really fun to have a free space to party, and you can party loud, and your neighbors won't complain. But this room was right next to this room. There are a lot of really gross things about basements. If you are in a basement and the uh, house drain clean out overflowed, but it wasn't cleaned up properly, that's something you should definitely contact your property owner or property manager about. And if they don't do anything to clean up the um, house waste properly, then give us a call and we'll, we'll um, have a conversation with them about what is an appropriate cleanup. It's not okay to walk into a basement and to leave human waste, toilet paper, and feces on the floor. If you encounter this, uh, notify your property owner. Um, If they don't do anything about it, give code enforcement a call. Asbestos is dangerous. It's most dangerous when you mess with it. So if you see this, it's a problem, but don't touch it. Don't go up and investigate it notify your landlord. It is okay. And you'll find in a lot of these older houses, you'll find asbestos covered pipes. And if nothing has happened to them, then they're fine with staying the way that they are. But it, but a pipe in this condition will have to be remediated. And it was in this property. Pipe should go somewhere. If you have a pipe that just ends abruptly, You should ask some questions. We expect that repairs are done in a skilled manner. That is our expectation of of all repairs. Duct tape is not an appropriate replacement for a pipe fitting. If you have multiple, if a repair is done in a curious, circuitous way, if you have a question about a repair, that might be, it might not be unreasonable for you to contact your, your property owner or contact code enforcement. All sleeping rooms are required to have a smoke alarm and a window to the outside, an openable window to the outside. So even if a basement is relatively finished, it doesn't make it appropriate for a sleeping room no matter how cool it can be. Water is is a difficult thing to manage in all buildings. Um, a couple of drops of water can cause um, a tremendous amount of destruction to a unit. So we want to do everything we can to contain all sources of water. So if you have a hole in your sink, notify your property owner. Because if you don't notify something, something like this could happen. Or something like this. All sleeping rooms um, and all apartments and all levels of an apartment building are required to have alarms. Smoke alarms in the sleeping rooms and combination smoke CO, CO stands for carbon monoxide, uh, smoke carbon monoxide in uh, the areas outside of the sleeping rooms and on each level of the house. So if you have one and they're malfunctioning, Give your landlord a a call to let them know that they're not working properly. Do not do this. Don't disconnect them. Don't cover them up with Gorilla Tape. All work needs to be done in a skilled manner. And skilled manner is defined in the Burlington City Ordinance, Chapter 18-2. If you have a question about how a repair was done, you, you should notify. Uh, your property owner, Um, and if they don't do anything about it, you should give us a call. This uh, property owner didn't have a light in the um, bathroom, and they 
instead stalled this, installed this wall sconce and drilled a hole in the ceiling of their bathroom and plugged it in in the upstairs bathroom rather than hiring a, an electrician to install a light fixture. These a uh, piece of electrical equipment, circuit breakers, were painted open. So they couldn't, if there was something that's happening that would require the breakers to, to break or off, there was no way that they could do that because they were basically pasted open. Um, this is an outdoor handle on an indoor shower, there are, repairs should be done in a skilled manner and there are tool or uh, devices specifically designed for, um, for use in a shower. Windows need to stay open. Um, openable windows need to be able to stay open um, at the height that you want them to. Uh, so anything that is used as a prop to hold a window open is not an appropriate way to keep the window open. In addition, you'll notice all of these flecks of, of flaked paint and dust in the windowsill, in the window well. If you can see the sunshine in your fully closed window, then you need to have the window repaired. So notify your property owner. And if they don't do anything about it, give us a call. Windows need to be double glazed or if they are single paned windows, they need to have um, a storm window on the outside. Can you research a property before you sign a lease? Yes, yes you can. There are a few things you can do. First, you can Google um, the property or the property manager or the property owner, but the city of Burlington does have rental and property in information that's accessible to you. So you would go to the city website, burlingtonbt.gov. You'd click on rental and property info. You'd write down the address. I wrote 12 Colchester Avenue. That's, the, um, that's a UVM office building. And you'd search, click on search property address. When you click on permit history report, what'll come up is a series of permits that, that were pulled or folders that were open about this, about that property. So this is some things that were opened up about 12 Colchester Avenue. For other properties, you might find things like this. Code complaint um, investigation. Code complaint investigation, code complaint investigation. It's okay if a property has had a complaint opened up about it. We don't, we don't expect properties to be 100% amazing 100% of the time because they're used and they're, they age. Our expectation is that, um, is that property owners and managers are informed of any repairs that need to be done and that repairs are done in a reasonable time frame. Um, what you would pay attention to though is, um, is when there's a complaint, what the complaint is, and then over here where it says violation and that it means it's still open or investigation and that it means it's still open. Where it says it's closed, it means that that, that complaint has been attended to, which is what we want, right? We want complaints to be attended to. All right, that's us. This is how you get a hold of us, 802-863-0442. Or you can find us online at burlingtonvt.gov slash DPI.